His name is Luis, and he used to be this famous musician back in Cuba. He even played the Cotton Club. He played with Bauza, Machido, Dizzy Gillespie. And he told you all of this. <laughs> that was a look at The Cuban, a film starring Louis Gossett Jr. as a one-time star of the Cuban jazz scene. Joining me now with more on this, another new movie releases this week is Richard Krauss, our film critic and host of Pop Life. Hello there, Richard. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. We have not seen Louis Gossett Jr. in a while, at least that I can remember. Great to see him back on the screen. Tell us about the Cuban in this mm -hmm. role. Well, you can see him on The Watchmen right ah, now, which right. was nominated for a bunch of Emmy Awards this year. But this is the first movie in a little while, and you'll be able to see this movie on drive-ins across the country. So check your local listings. Uh, it goes to VOD in October or November. But this is the story of uh, a man, yes. Lewis, played by Lewis yes. Gossett yes. Jr., yes. Uh, in a long care, uh, a long term care facility. Uh, he has Alzheimer's disease and he hasn't spoken in a very long time. He's essentially catatonic until one day his nurse comes in and she's whistling a jazz song and it brings him to life. All of a sudden, he, his eyes open and he becomes communicative with her when she plays music. And he starts to tell her about his life, that he was once a famous uh, Cuban guitar player who had played at all these amazing places like the Cotton Club, as we just heard in the clip there. And it's really the story of the, the curative power of music. And it's about the relationship between Lewis and his nurse. And it's a really lovely movie that really relies on the wonderful performance from Lewis Gossett Jr. For much of this film, he doesn't say anything. Uh, but you always know, no matter whether he's speaking or not, uh, exactly what he's thinking and exactly where his character is at. It's a lovely performance and... Uh, the music's amazing. So okay. it's a lovely performance, a good music, and uh, you can dance to it. So I gave it three and a half out of five stars. You can dance in your car while you're at the drive-in. <laughs> That's Love right. it. Okay, <laughs> next is Random Acts of Violence, which is co-written and directed by one of your favorite people, Jay Baruchel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, he also is in the film as well. And this is a movie that you have to wrap your head around a little bit. This is a movie that has scenes of brutal violence in it, but it asks us to examine our relationship with violence on screen. So it is the story of a comic book writer who has taken a real life serial killer and turned him into a character called Slasher Man in his comic books. He's at the end of the run of this series and he can't figure out how to end the series. So. On a promo tour, he and his wife and a number of others, uh, as they're driving to New York City, uh, stop at the scene of the slasher man's crimes, and of course, bad things start to happen. Hmm. And this is a movie that has some really brutal scenes in it, but it's asking us all the way along, why do we watch this? Why do we know the names of the serial killers and not the names of their victims? Why is it that this is seen as entertainment? What's the difference between that and true crime? So I give it three and a half out of five stars. Keep in mind, though, it is brutal by times. Okay. We've got a minute left. Let's talk about Primal. Mm -hmm. It's starring Nicolas Cage, and it's going straight to video on demand. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a film that, uh, the kind of film that Nicolas Cage makes after he has a visit with his tax lawyer, I think. <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> you can almost, as my friend Jeff Favier used to say, you can almost see him reaching for the paycheck uh, in this film. It's the story of an exotic animal poacher who ends up putting a very valuable feline that he captures in the wilds of the Brazilian jungle on the same ship with the psychopathic killer who escapes. Uh, what could go wrong? Well, nothing, because it's all a bunch of CGI animals. There's very little action in this movie. Uh, I, I was wondering, you know, Nicolas Cage is a fine actor, and usually, even in a movie like this, he comes up with something that's kind of fun or an off an offbeat kind of twist to it. The only thing I can think of here is he read the script and goes, I get to use a blow dart. Sure, I'll do that, because that's the only reason I could see making this movie. Oh, so I gave it one and a half. <laughs> oh, boy. Sounds like that was pretty generous. <laughs> Richard Krause, mm -hmm. film critic and the host of Pop Life. Thanks, Richard. See you soon. See you later.